Have you ever been on a backpacking trip and gotten a few miles in and thought, oh my gosh, this pack is killing my bag. I think I brought too much stuff. Yeah, it happens. It even happens to experienced hikers. It's not just the domain of beginning backpackers. But if you are a beginning backpacker, and especially if you are planning an upcoming through hike, you might be wondering, what should I bring? And what are the things that I really need to leave behind? So today we're going to talk about backpacking gear that you don't need. So I'm going to run down 12 items that I have found very commonly. I see hikers, backpackers carry that they don't need to have. And some of you might argue that, yeah, I really want that item. And that's completely fine. I'm not saying that you can't take these things on a backpacking trip with you. What I am saying is that if you want to lighten your load, there are things that you do not need to have in your pack. If you want to be minimalist and only carry, you know, the things that are really essential to your hike, then I have some tips on that on other videos that you can see up here. And sometimes it's just not even a matter of weight. It's that there's just so much stuff in your pack that you can't figure out where anything is and you're constantly losing things and it's taken forever to pack and unpack and find things that you need. So being more minimalist and only carrying the things that you need can actually speed up your hike and make your day a lot more pleasurable when you take away that unknown factor of having to look for things that you just don't know where they are. So let's get started right now. One of the first things that you don't need to carry is this. It's called a ZC. Um, this is by Tharmarest. Nemo makes one as well. I think it's called the Chipper. Uh, it doesn't weigh a lot, but it's an item that is pretty much purpose-built. It's for sitting on and keeping your backside dry. It does work well as a windscreen, so if you do have it, you can use it as a windscreen as long as it doesn't fall over onto your stove and cause a fire. You don't need this because you could take this. This is a piece of Tyvek that I find is much more flexible than the ZC. I use this as kind of a doormat outside of my tent. I use it to lay on during the day when I want to take a nap. And you can see, and this is still folded in half, it's a lot bigger than the ZC. So it's a very practical thing to have if you want to be able to say spread out some gear to dry, keep things clean outside your tent. And it really doesn't weigh any different than this, I, depending on the size that you have and the type of pad that you have, it might be a slight weight difference. But in terms of practicality, I find the Tyvek sheet is a winner. Something else that you don't need to carry is a flashlight. Now, a lot of people think they need a flashlight. They're like, well, how am I gonna see when I go out of my tent at night? But this is a duplicative piece of gear because you have a headlamp. And a lot of tents now have places where you can put your headlamp up above so you can get light all in your tent when you need it. And that comes in really handy. And that also means that you do not need this kind of a light. So if you are thinking about packing a little Lucy light or some kind of a light for your tent and or a flashlight, leave these items at home, use your headlamp instead. The third item that I see a lot of backpackers carry, especially beginning backpackers, and I did this myself on the Appalachian Trail, and I tell you, when I decided to send this home, I sent a message home as well and said, I might want this back in a week or two because I don't know if I could live without it. But once I did, I was amazed how unnecessary this little mug was. And it's a handy mug. It's got a flip top so you can drink on the go. It's got a cup that comes out. You know, it's a neat little gadget. Doesn't weigh a whole lot, so if you want to take it as a luxury item, that's completely okay. But you've got a pot, and you can use your pot to drink out of as well as to cook in. So you can just bring a lightweight titanium pot, and what I normally do is I might do a boil enough water for my dinner, put that into whatever I'm rehydrating for the night, and then if I want tea or something else in the evening or in the morning, I boil my water separately and go ahead and make my coffee, and that way I can drink out of this container while I'm actually eating the food that I have already prepared. So ditch the mug, keep the pot. And while we're talking about cooking, there are a couple things that you might be thinking about carrying, like a cozy for your food. This one I made so that I could put backpacking meals inside it. It will easily fit a quart Ziploc bag, so if I've dehydrated my own meals or split a meal, then I can pop that in here. And I even made a nice little hanger so I could just hang it up and not have to worry about it falling over while I was cooking my dinner. But I don't really need it. I, You know, this is insulated. That's nice, right? But what I do instead is I use my pot again and I can take that little plastic bag and put it down inside, put the lid on, and if it's cold out, I'll just wrap it up in my bandana or even just hold it in my hand to help warm myself up. And this is one less item to carry. It's, it frees up space in my pack. It's something that I don't need to worry about getting dirty or losing or anything like that because the pot does it all. 
Speaking of your cook pot, is one of these in your pack? This is a little pot scraper and I see a lot of people carry these. You really don't need it. If you've got a good spoon, you can scrape it out and scrape out your pot that way if you eat in your pot. But actually I think you'll find as you're through hiking that you'll tend to not even cook in the pot because it's a lot easier to just boil the water and rehydrate whatever it is that you're eating in the container that that came in and then your pot doesn't get dirty. But if your pot does get dirty, instead of having to, you know, carry this little item that you might lose and spend time looking for it to scrape out the inside of your pot, you could just put a little water in here and use your fingers. They work really well. Use your bandana if you've got one. Uh, so leave the pot scraper or a scrubby at home. You just don't need it. When it comes to eating on the trail, and honestly, when you're on the trail, you're hiking and taking a break, eating something and sleeping, right? So this is a big part of your day. But you don't need to carry a full set of camp utensils. These are great when you're doing car camping and you want to be able to cut that steak that you just made on the grill or eat some soup or chili, whatever it might be. But when you're through hiking and you're focused on traveling fast and light, to get as much mileage out of the day and have the best time. You don't want to be worrying about three pieces of silverware, or flatware that you might lose. You want a titanium spoon. And this one spoon is handy for just about everything. It's great for stirring up your food. It's got sharp enough edges and it's strong enough that you can actually kind of cut your food with it if you need to. And I even find, like I just mentioned the pot scraper, you could even use the edge of the spoon to kind of scrape out your pot if you have some food stuck on the side. So this little guy is a do-it-all kind of thing. And the one I've got is Tooks Titanium. It's got a polished bowl, which I like for the mouthfeel is a little bit more like the silverware that you have at home versus the unpolished portion. Uh, they do come in both. So you might want to look for one with a polished bowl like this. But this thing has served me well for over five years. It's a great piece of gear. And it's one thing to keep track of versus three pieces of flatware. So leave these guys at home. A lot of times beginning backpackers, even in, a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times beginning backpackers and even more experienced through hikers carry a lot of weight that they don't need in excess clothing. So how many pairs of socks are in your backpack right now? I started out thinking, well, I'll carry two pairs and I'll wear one and I'll wash the other and they'll be nice and dry in the morning. And you know what? That just didn't work out because a lot of times the trail is either wet or rainy and humid. And things just don't dry the way you think that they might. And if you hang them off your pack, there's a chance that you could lose them. So really what you need is just one good pair of hiking socks that you wear every day. And believe me, you'll get used to that as part of embracing the, embracing the suck, embracing the hiker trash lifestyle, right? Just one good pair of hiking socks. Now what I do carry, and I highly recommend, is a warm, dry pair of socks to sleep in. And that's actually part of my overall through hiking wardrobe is to have dry clothes for nighttime that I sleep in because I consider that a safety concern as well as comfort. It's, you don't want to get in your stinking dirty clothes into your sleeping bag and then your sleeping bag stinks and it, it's yuck. <laughs> so you carry one nice pair of socks for day hiking, for hiking during the day. And, you know, eventually they might wear out and you'll have to replace them in town. But, you know, a lot of good quality socks like these John Tough and these Smart Wolves will easily last a full through hike. You don't need multiple pairs and anything else that's in your pack that you have multiples of, multiple underwear, bras, multiple tops, you know, that sort of thing. Get rid of that and just carry one of each as well as some dry clothes for nighttime and you'll be in good shape and you will thank me because your back is a lot lighter. All right, you're going to have to break up with something here <laughs> and it might be a problem for you. It might not, but I see a lot of people using every little hook and strap and and thing that's on their pack to hang something off of you do not need a whole mess of carabiners right um these things add up you can get some pretty lightweight ones but unfortunately lightweight plastic ones are prone to break and some of these are getting a little bit heavier especially as they get bigger so only use the carabiners that you specifically need to have for things on your pack do not carry extra ones just in case they break. Do not carry extra ones just in case I think I might want to hang something on my pack. Get rid of anything that's a superfluous extra item and you'll be happier because even though you think, oh, I can't shave any more weight out of my pack, get rid of a few carabiners and you're going to lose a few ounces. So yeah, keep it simple. If you were to ask me the number one item that ends up in hiker boxes, I can tell you exactly what it is. And it's because this is something that comes with the product that is designed to be used with. 
and people think they need to carry it, but you don't. This, do you know what this is? <laughs> this is not for medicine. <laughs> this is the syringe that comes with a Sawyer filter, the Sawyer squeeze, the Sawyer mini, and it is used to clean out the filter. So it's got a little nozzle on the end and you just kind of put it in here and you plunge water through to clean your filter. But I'd be willing to bet money that you have a smart water ball in your pack and it's probably got a squirt top. And if it doesn't, you can pick one up in town and you can use that squirt to clean your filter just as efficiently as this thing. If you want to use one of these, just go to the hiker box wherever you're staying and I bet you'll find two or three of them. You can use it, clean your filter, and throw it back in the box because you do not need to carry it with you. And this item needs no introduction. You may have already ruled out taking the lovely little backpacking chair, but there are plenty of people who want one and think they need one. The chair is definitely a nice luxury item, especially one that only weighs about a pound, like the Hillinox 201. Those are pretty awesome, but um, you don't need them on the trail. You definitely don't need them because there are lots of places to sit. And if you've got a Z seed or a Timex sheet like we talked about, um, you can just spread that out and lean yourself against a tree, lay down in the dirt, sit in the shade wherever you want. Uh, you will find picnic tables at a lot of shelters along the AT, so those are great places to sit as well. But pretty much plop yourself in the dirt wherever you can. Just don't sit on a thorn or a cactus or poison ivy and you'll be good to go and you don't need that chair. Two more items I want you to think about, and one I find is more common with people going on a shorter backpacking trip because they're like, oh, the weight's not that bad, but these things can get heavy, um, and they're waste that you have to carry after you've used, used them, and that is hand warmers or toe warmers. Now, it's nice if you have a freezing cold night and you want to stick one of these down in your sleeping bag and kind of warm it up. That's cool, but you can do the same thing with an algae bottle or any other water bottle that you've put some... Um, hot water into and you warm up your sleeping bag that way as long as it's watertight because you don't want it to leak in your pack but these things you know once you open them up you shake them up and they activate by the air and they last a long time which is really nice you can stick them in your pockets you can put toe warmers in your in your booties or whatever um they're great when you're outside and it's cold but if you are through hiking this is just heavy waste that you have to carry and there are other ways to get your hands and your feet warm so i'd encourage you to just leave these at home and adopt some of those other practices like the warm water bottle or even just little things like doing jumping jacks before you go to bed makes a huge difference because it gets your metabolism going before you go to sleep. And once you do that, then your body is actually burning some calories as you try to go to sleep and it keeps you warmer. Same thing happens if you say have a candy bar before you go to bed or other things that are gonna help to keep you warm. Carry gloves, like carry those dry socks that I mentioned and you won't find a need for these little gadgets at all. And the final item, <laughs> these are cool. This is a, kind of a hard-sided little massage ball for your feet, right? And if you're hiking hundreds, if not thousands of miles, your feet are probably going to hurt at some point. And you might be like, oh, I want to get this so I can roll out my feet, right? And and just, you know, get rid of some of those aches and pains. These are great to have at home, but you don't need to carry it in your pack. And just think about how much room that takes up in a pack, especially if you're using like a 40 or 50 liter pack. And you got a lot of other things in there. You don't need something like this that doesn't even squish. Instead, try using a trekking pole or a water bottle to roll out your feet. And you will find that it works just as well. You can also use that to massage your other muscles, your calf muscles, your thigh muscles. Do some yoga. I'm a big fan of tent yoga that you do with just a few moves in your tent, either at night or in the morning when you get up. And stretch things out and you'll feel a lot better and you will have to carry a little red ball, a cork ball, or anything like that. I would love to hear from you as far as either when items that you have carried in the past that you realized that you did not need to bring along, or anything that I have missed in this roundup that you think is something that people should ditch right away. <laughs> so feel free to drop a note down in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed already, I'd love it if you'd take a minute to subscribe to this channel and help YouTube know that my videos are worth watching. So thanks again for being with me and I'll be back at to see with another video on backpacking tips and advice for beginning and experienced through hikers.